Um, you know, nerves, uh, nerves. First wake out really down the way and stuff like that. You know, it's exciting. Exciting being uh, being out there, competing. Uh, you know, uh, I was happy happy with the win, but you know, I got to put more effort. At, Got to be aggressive from start to finish, and you know, I got some work to do just come March. But I'm just glad, glad to comp compete and won today. What just got to keep building. What are the challenges after almost two years of not wrestling? Conditioning, or it seemed like you went out for the aggressor right away. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's that's what I'm uh, I'm really trying to uh, accomplish in my matches. You know, I try to change that up from the way that I wrestled before. Is I'll, every match you see me, I'm gonna be the first person to shoot. I'm gonna be aggressive uh, like I was in the beginning of that match. It's just a matter of just keep building on my attacks, you know, better finishes, uh, you know, better on top, better on bottom. I just got to keep building, keep pushing the pace from start to finish the match. Like, I, I really just got to keep uh, maximizing the effort. I think that's uh, just like as a team, uh, I think, uh, you know, what you can see it out there is just we just got to maximize our effort from everybody. What takedowns were a lot for sure? I'm sorry, what was what that? What takedowns were a lot today in today's match? I, I'm, I didn't quite understand. What, which takedowns? What did you use for takedowns at work? For you? Uh, you know, I was trying to get to my high crotch. I didn't necessarily get to it all the time. It was a lot of counter offense towards the later, latter end of the match. But uh, I got to my double leg a few times, and uh, you know, it's just like I said, just being aggressive. I think is uh, is is really what, what score, scores points for me in that match. Camp was a good start for you today. Build towards March it was a good spot to start for you. Yeah, you know, uh, you can't start really any, anywhere else. Uh, that was my first match, so. You know, it was a great start for me uh, to get that W. But like I said, I'm, I'm not not content. I'm happy with the win, but I need to score more points. How was the conditioning? I felt felt pretty good. Um, like I said, first first wake up, a little nerves with everything, all the commotions going around. But overall, not not horrible. But I just <laughs> how many phone calls did you have today about tickets or whatever? Uh, I kind of tried to settle that out uh, last night for the most part. It was really not a, a stress thing, or you know, I don't I don't that stuff really doesn't get to me. <coughs> so, wasn't too too big of an issue, but big uh, big bound work out here out here today. Got to see me wrestle for my first match at Rutgers, so I'm sure they're pretty happy about that. Did you feel like the pressure, like you know, because a lot of people haven't seen you from Atlantic City that were here today, and it's like maybe they're expecting so much more from you. I mean, did you have that? Is that part of your the thoughts that you have coming out tonight? Um, you know, I, I'm wrestling for me and my team right now, so you know. Uh, as much as I want to be a crowd pleaser and stuff like that, I'm just trying to work as hard as I can work and you know pr produce the best effort and the, the best version of myself come March. You wrestled in a lot of these Big Ten venues. How did that crowd shape up to some of the places you've been? Uh, awesome. I think that that uh, our attendance and stuff like that for for Big Ten matches, you know, right up to par with everybody else. Maybe our, our crowd doesn't heckle another team as as great yet, but hopefully we'll get there. You know, a couple more matches. I'm oh, sorry, Andrew. You two years ago you wrestled Ohio State beat Iowa, correct? Yeah. And you you had a pin in that match. That that was at St. John. It was a, a decision, but uh, it was at St. John Arena. Yeah. That was a big deal for Ohio State, right? So you kind of lived this before. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that's an exciting position to be in. Uh, you know, being those guys. Anytime, anytime I uh, could beat an Iowa guy, I'm, I'm happy about it because I, I don't. I want to beat them. You know, I really want to beat. I want to beat every Big Ten team, but definitely Iowa. Anthony, talk about your move there. I guess the last three seconds of the match, where you wear the clock and the score and all that. What's going through your mind right there? Uh, kind of just my bread and butter. I guess my best attacks. In the yeah. leg, so. uh, I heard it, I heard their coaches yelling a little, but you know, you just got to fire off your uh, best attacks. And those thirty seconds goes. We practice that almost every day. The last thirty seconds of a match, you got to get out of bottom. You got to take the guy down and win the match. And, it was just I was in the right situation and took my best shot and I got found a way to get it done. So to get that done and get a lead that early, what was the energy like from the crowd and just your reaction to that? It was really exciting, uh, putting Rutgers on the map here in the Big Ten, Rutgers wrestling especially, and I made a huge commitment to Rutgers wrestling coming here, and it just it's huge to see things really picking up. Uh, you take like a team five years ago against an Iowa team, this this night it's a lot different. Uh, our effort's not where it needs to be right now, like Cam Platano said, but uh, it's going to get there. And I believe in the program. I believe in my teammates. So you know this it's really kid, exciting. Did you notice kid you wrestled tonight? Yeah, I knew him just from rankings. I mean, I know the top, <coughs> the top guys in my weight class. Had you wrestled him before? No, nah, he's yeah. a couple years older than me. So. And what did Del Vecchio's win do? I mean, it, obviously you pumped up the crowd. You took it to another level. But just to get you know some points on the board after losing the first match, what did that do going into your match? Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's tough, especially watching one of your high school teammates wrestle right before you. I just try to stay calm and 
really focused on myself. I uh, just kept playing playing my, my own match in my head over and over again, trying not to look at Scott Vessel because I start watching him and then I get into the match, I get my emotions in the match. So I just try to stay calm and try not to watch as much as I can and hopefully to see his hand raised at the end of the match. Did you have a lot of distractions too? Like Andrew, uh, you know, I mean, it looked like wrestling Hall of Fame night around here, which is good for the program, but it's like every, every left turn or right turn I made, it was somebody I knew, you know? Yeah, uh, definitely a lot of familiar faces. South Plainfield's 10 minutes away, 15 minutes away, so I saw a lot of family members and close friends, so that was cool, but uh, in the end, it's it's about uh, Rutgers wrestling and our the guys on the team and our coaches, and we're trying to beat Iowa. We're not trying to lose seven matches to three. There was a lot of people who thought that saw this as a dream, almost Iowa, in our backyard coming to wrestle. Yeah. You know, like a lot of you guys were wrestling for all of those people who had wrestled in high school before you. Yeah, it's definitely cool, but uh, something to get used to because it's going to be happening quite often, especially this year. We're going to be having those top guys in, so uh, it's just more opportunities to get it done next time, you know? Two more questions for the student athletes. Oh. Coach, huh? Sure. Well, we'll, 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 we'll just finish with student athletes first. Okay. Then we'll Anthony, when Scott wins, so it's got to be kind of cool that he's coming off. You're going on in this situation. Yeah, it's it's definitely something cool, especially like seeing him celebrate, have that moment with himself. But uh, I don't know. It's tough. You get, kind of just got to distract yourself yeah. and just play it down a little more than it really is, because you don't want to be thinking there's six thousand people going crazy right before you step on the mat. It's a little. A little adrenaline rush, you don't want to be using that right away. Yeah. Anthony, how important is the picking off those guys that are right ahead of you? And for other for your teammates to do that too. And you said, like you said before, people that other people think are better than you, but you know you're better than them. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's the first time I wrestled that guy, so I don't know if people really thought I was better or not, or if he was better than me or not. But first time I wrestled him, so just another guy ahead of me. Just rankings mean a little bit. you got to get to the national tournament and just kind of clinch that spot. So. It's huge to knock someone up off ahead of me, especially him placing fourth at Midlands last weekend. So that was pretty big for me. Cam, you were away from competition for a team for what a year and a half? Uh, yeah, just just about. Your last match was the NCAA's. Yep. What is it that you you lose in that time that you need to be really successful? You know. What do you lose? Yeah. You know, uh, like what do you have to kind of build up to? to get back into that frame of mind type of thing? I don't know. I think the way I look at it is, uh, you know, when you're where I was, uh, you know, you have everything to gain at that point. So I, I don't think I, you know, you lose time competing, you know, uh, you miss you miss chances, opportunities. But, uh, you know, I, I, for me, it's just about the fight getting back. And, and uh, now it's now it's about, you know, raising the bar, raising the level, and really just going out and competing hard every time that I'm out there. So. I wouldn't say you know I lost lost much anything except for opportunities to you know compete against the best guys in the country. But you know I, I think I, I gained a lot through the process as well. So. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. We'll take questions for Coach Gale now. Coach, what were your, what were your thoughts on, on this night? Right, Coach. Attendance, but maybe not as close as you were hoping for. Yeah, it was a great crowd. I thought it was an awesome crowd. Uh, I'm into the crowd. I know, you know, it's part of what we're trying to build here, no doubt. So I'm into it. Uh, it's a passionate fan base. They love their wrestling. I could hear them chirping. They want us to be more aggressive. They're frustrated we're not scoring. I could hear all that because they're so passionate. So it, it's great to have that. Little, you know, they need to understand we're wrestling the number one team in the country. So, but they're allowed to have those expectations. That's what's great. And. Uh, I guess to get back to your, I'm kind of rambling about it, but to get back to your point, it, it, you know, it's great to see all those people I was talking about and the familiar faces and the old timers and the, and the, the greats in New Jersey wrestling come back. It needs to be, it needs to be every time though. This needs to be an every time occurrence, and that's part of our job. We got to wrestle better in this atmosphere. We got to, we got to do better, and we're gonna, we're gonna get there. But uh, you know, that that's all part of it. And it, again, it's great to wrestle in that atmosphere. We promised these guys we recruited long ago that this was gonna be the, this was gonna happen. Um, the Big Ten certainly helps, but this should be an everyday occurrence or an everyday yeah, occurrence. It's, it's really wild. It's like you have the Yankees show up you know, in your first match. It's got to be yeah. Iowa, right? Uh, you know, why not? Why not? Yeah. If you're going to wrestle someone, let's wrestle the number one team. And and I, I don't know, are they the number one team? Because maybe next week Minnesota's the number one team. And yeah. in, in three weeks, probably Ohio State could be the number one team. So uh, it, it's a grueling conference, but you can't. 
That's why you're in this. Why the heck you want to train the way these guys train and not wrestle the best competition? Nights like that uh, are important for this sport. Next step is, is more guys getting their hand raised in that atmosphere. What do you think that Iowa brought to the table tonight that you guys just don't have yet? A style of wrestling that I've been watching for 25, 30 years, in your face style, pushing you to the edge, not real athletic, just tough, hard nose, in your face, their butt to the center, our butt to the out of bounds, and you know their will, meaning that you need to match their intensity. And in some spots, we didn't match their intensity at all. Uh, when they're on bottom, they're out in five seconds. You know, when we're on bottom, we're getting ridden. Um, things like that. That's important, and it, it's a mindset. It's not that they're overall better wrestlers; they're tougher. They're not in better shape. They're just—it's their mind that I'm going to score the next point, and I'm going to put my will on you, and you either match it or you get beat 15 to four, which happened in a couple spots. We got overwhelmed at, at at 25, and we got overwhelmed at 49 and 65. I didn't see that coming, so that was a little disappointing. What did you see in 33 and 41? Uh, yeah, good effort there. Yeah, I thought they did their job. You know, I did the, the one thing Anthony doesn't bring up. He's beating the number six guy in the country who's been in that lineup and in the part of that program for five years now. Who, you know, Josh Jeva committed to Rutgers. Uh, he's a big time recruit, won a junior national title, ended up going to Iowa. So there's some history there. That's a big match for Anthony. And you don't you don't see all that. You don't hear those stories. And so there's a little bit of pressure there. He's ranked six in the country for a reason to kick and wrestle. He's been part of that program again for that's a huge win. And the first time in a big spot in front of these fans, and we all know the expectations on both of these guys that sat next to me tonight. So, they're you know maybe they're unrealistic, maybe they're not. Whatever you know, you the, he found a way to win, and they you know he should be given a lot more credit than I know it wasn't Anthony Ashnall when he's at South Plainfield, right? He didn't put up 15 points. That's not going to happen. Not in this conference. These guys are just as good. You know, you just don't know about him. You don't hear about him. So, uh, big win for Scotty. He did what he had to do. That was important. And. Uh, I thought Andrew, again, just to go over his match a little bit, that's a hard thing to do. He hasn't made weight in a year and a half. And his first time down, he's wrestling an Iowa Hawkeye. He knows the paces. We knew what was going to happen. I knew he was going to hit a wall. It's normal. We tried to simulate it during practice this week. We tried getting him down the weight, but it's not. It was in front of three people, myself, Coach Pritzloff, and Coach Leonardis. Refing. Doesn't simulate whatever it is, 6,000. So heck of a job by him to keep his composure. He'll start scoring more points. He'll score late. He'll blow matches open, but good for him getting down the weight for the first time in a year and a half and, and competing in this environment. He, uh, he, he seemed more aggressive. Like seeing, I saw him a couple times out there, and, and it just seemed he was slow. He was trying to figure out what he was doing as he was going along. He seemed a little more, I don't know. In, I thought he seemed way. really po poised. I really did. I really thought he was in, in a good situation. I thought he maintained position really, really well. Uh, not a any time, excuse me, did I think he was backing up last 10 seconds? I think he got hit for a stalling, but I thought he kept himself in the center of the mat, and the kind of the game plan changed a little bit where he went some counter offense late, which guy takes a shot, he's scoring, and that's that's what he I did. I think Phil did with uh, the maniac over there, yeah. out, Mr. Evans. I thought, uh, I thought, again, he matched that intensity. Yeah. He fought him hard, but he has he's got to find a way to get to this guy's legs. You know, that's number two guy in the country, whatever he is, he's going to contend for a national title. We need to find a way to get to their legs and get to our offense. It's great to hand fight for seven minutes, but let's score some points. So We talked about Billy Smith's match. He gave top toll for quite a battle. Not comp didn't seem confident in his attack. It's the truth. Got pushed around, got ridden, never gets ridden. Uh, seemed content. I don't know if that's fair or not. I don't mean to be too hard on the guy. But you're down, you're down a point or with riding time two points with a minute to go. Let's get to an attack. Let's score. Let's not be happy losing 4-2 to the number one guy in the country. Let's score. And until he starts doing that, he'll never beat the good guys. So just seemed content 4-2, and we're backing up still. So it's frustrating. Coach, anything wrong with Parati? Is he a little scared? you got to do everything right at this level. you got to do everything right. You can read between the lines on that, right? Right. If you, don't, if you cheat and you cut corners and you don't do your weight right and you, and you let the Christmas holidays soften you up a little bit, Bad things are going to happen to you, and that's where he's at. That's where he's at. You got to do everything right. He knows that better than anyone in there. That that must be a tough stop for you because after the holiday, this is the first stop. Well, Iowa, right after the Christmas time. We saw this. How we saw this coming a year ago. There's that's no excuse. It's no excuse. Get your training in. Put yourself in a dark place if you have to. Right. You don't need to be with us to train. You could do something on Christmas Day. You could do something the day after. Get your weight under control and be ready to compete. And if you don't do it at this, in this conference at this level, there'll be more nights like that. 
And that just doesn't go for Parati. That goes for our, our whole program. Two more questions. How much, how much can you learn from the experience of playing the number one team in the country? Wrestling the number one team in the country. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's a high level. That's a high level. And I think that'll be good going forward. We got to match it. You know, we're going to have to. Illinois is just as good. What are they, seven or nine? I don't know. <laughs> Minnesota, again, like I said, is going to be one. Let's get ready to go again. We'll have opportunities to win matches. You know, out in Champaign Friday night and then back home with Minnesota, we're going to have opportunities. You got to take advantage of every single opportunity given. But this gives us a, a measuring stick, right? We knew that was going to be a fight. You know, how physical they are. It's the conference, and uh, we got to get used to it. You know, we got eight more of them, and we'll be, we'll be ready to go. We'll be ready to go. And this, again, this all prepare us for March. All this will prepare us. We're not going to see anything in March we haven't seen already. And that's the product of the schedule for sure. Coach, as happy as you were with the three decisions, were you overall disappointed in the other guys' inability to score? Yeah, I just, I, I just felt we got overwhelmed at those weights I talked about. And it's uh, Kenny Thiebaud can compete. He can wrestle with anyone. And he just took a big step back. And, you know, maybe Gravina is not ready for that level yet. Uh, I think he will in time get there. And, uh, shot, you know, I know Sean McCabe's up against it a little bit. But, yeah, I just overwhelmed. I mean, you know, they're overwhelmed and you feel helpless. You know, what am I going to do? I can only yell so much. It doesn't, gonna, you know, it's got to be about the guy. All the yelling I do means nothing. So, uh, yeah, just overwhelmed in some spots. And, uh, But I, I like our effort. I know where we're at right now. I know how good we're going to be. I know where we're going to get to. And, again, this isn't – it's not every day we get to see number one, you know, number one come in here and you'll get to see three or four more programs just like that. So – how got much does Andrew get from having experience this kind of setting at, in uh, St. John's? Honestly, I, I mean, is it yeah, I, I thought about that, and everybody talks about that. He's got a Big Ten experience. You throw all that out the window when it comes to seven minutes, you putting yourself up against it. Again, we talked about his layoff. It's guys like Anthony Parati, it doesn't matter that he's an All-American. It's about the seven minutes you're going to wrestle because the guy across the mat doesn't care that he's an All-American. So same thing with Andrew. I don't think he – reached back and thought about what he did at Ohio State. No, he was in the moment and he wrestled well enough to win tonight and he'll, he'll continue to get in better shape and, and continue to be good. He's got a tough road, though. Mm -hmm. He's going to wrestle number one, number three, number four. He's got a tough road and he'll be up for it, though. He'll be ready to go. Thanks, Coach. Anything? Thanks, Coach.